well, autumn is upon us, winter is approaching, and I've come across this lovely photograph. Oh, oh, not that one. Wait a minute. I lost it. This one. This is in Yorkshire. I'm not quite sure where. In the Dales, maybe. But you've just got to love those autumn colours, haven't you? With the yellows, reds, umbers, and then that lovely shapes that we've got in this uh, picture as well. Lovely old cottage. And we've got a couple of characters here walking up the street. But we've got some nice greens as well and shapes. Um, it's a good idea sometimes when you look at your picture and say, you know, what is the essence of it? What do I really want to capture? Well, principally, it's the colour, of course. Um, but I want to get the light here contrasting with this. So I better not do that sky too, too dark. Uh, although we have some clouds here. It's a little... So we could add some there to give some interest. But we've got the trees coming in here. And um, these road, of course, it gives us the uh, lead in to the picture, almost some perspective. And we've got the lights on the pavement contrasting with the darks here. We've got some nice colours on some bunting here. I must be celebrating something here. A few flags. Um, and in the distance, we've got some hillside. There are certainly some greens and some meadow in there. I can see a hint of the the walls that you see in the uh, in Yorkshire. Yes, the dry stone walls in the distance there, and it somewhat blued out, of course, in the distance, giving us aerial perspective. So let's get on with that and right away and see what I can make of it. Um, you'll notice I've got. I've done a sketch. I hope you can see it. It's not too bright. Um, so I've done a fair amount of detail on this because I think uh, I need to uh, be fairly accurate. Most good paintings start out with a reasonable drawing. So let's crack on with that. Um, I'm going to be using today principally these paints here. This is, um, they're sommelier paints. We just started using them. They're really intense, beautiful colours. So I've got quite a selection here. I've got the ultramarine, cerulean, cobalt, um, deep yellow, um, that's right, lemon yellow there, ochre, raw sienna, uh, Burnt umber there. Oh no, burnt sienna, that's right, raw umber there. Um, viridian, no, hooker's green there, sap green, cadmium red, and um, a little orange, Payne's grey, a little bit of violet in here, and Chinese white. Um, so let's see if we can get something. Um, I'm just going to put a general wash in there with some, uh, I think I'm going to go with ultramarine, tried and tested. But these Celerier paints are so intense. Um, you need very little of them to uh, give you a nice, deep, rich colour. So let's sweep this in. Got trees off to the left here, so I will be uh, painting over those, over that sky there. So if I get some colour in it. If we have some holes in the sky, we've got at least something representing the sky and poking through. So I'll bring it right down here over the, this whole building here. 
got this lamp post, this striking lamp post off to the left here. So we've got to get that in. Um, so I think I'm going to leave that. But I'm going to take a dampish brush and make sure I haven't got any hard edges on those. clouds or hints of clouds on I have. So let's leave that alone now. And I've got this big sweep of road here. So how to deal with that? Um, I'm going to have a little bit of Payne's Grey with my ultramarine there in this foreground, um, very wet mixture and a little bit of purple with it actually because there was certainly a hint of that in that road in that tarmac there. So let's go with that. Um, Yes, I think we can do that. Vary the colours. Some colours I've got left on my palette. Sort of varied sweep. I'm going to put in shadows and leaves. Of course, so let's just go with that. I'm painting on Langton's 140 pounds. Fine, it's not too much texture in it, but uh, I think that's okay. Um, actually, while it is wet, I think I'm going to drop in some of these colours, these autumnal colours. Seems early to be popping them in, but we could have that wet on wet effect now. So I'm getting a bit of crimson alizarin, a little bit of orange to give me a little start here. Like that. nice and wet. Right, and then I'm going to come in with some thicker paint on that to give me some um, leaves. Let's leave that for the moment. Um, now I could actually put in some of these autumn leaves and it will help me frame the picture when we get to the main subject there which is that lovely house so we'll just dab in a few base colors here I'll put some much more vivid colors in a minute but um, I think we could start with that it really does come across into the main frame there and I need some greens lower down here so a bit of Payne's grey there because we're not getting the sunshine it's all rather dark in here so I'm just mixing some of my sap green hint of hookers perhaps, a little sienna, yes yeah, so we've got to get some of the suggestions here, this dark colour under here, I've got the dark shrubs here coming out and 
and areas in our tree as well. Um, got some nice shrubs here as well. So we've got to vary the greens. It's quite a light on there, so I'm going to drop a bit of a lemon yellow in there. A little shrub we've got going there. Um, just well, where you can pop around on your. You don't have to be religiously going from one to the other. You can. It depends what suits you to dodge around. Although, of course, in watercolour, the convention is you paint the lighter colours and then the dark. Quite opposite to oil paint, where, again, the convention is to get the darks in, get your darkest darks, and then, but like all rules, you can break them. Why not? tree here poking out over this I think I'll um, wet that a little bit so we just got a mere hint don't want too much white showing there Drop some different colour in there. So get the wet on wet there. I'll put some different branches and things to suggest that as we go. Um, I think I need to put a little darker colour in there though. A little bit of ultramarine. We'll do the trick, I think. I think we need something there. Right. Um, now let's get some of the these vivid colours in. Well, it's a little bit wet. Let's clean the brush off a bit there. That will do. Um, we've got mainly oranges and yellows, so going to make up a little mixture now. Orange, I've got cadmium red and ultramarine. So we'll just flick those in. Just magnificent colours. buildings here which I can put in as I go. Um, we'll put some yellows as well. Get these reds in for the moment. It's a squirrel brush I'm using. It's split at the end so that helps me with a little bit of Suggestion of leaves. Let's get a bit of lemon yellow going there as well. And I think we can put some ochres well there. Um, get some vivid yellows there. Let's get some orange. And we've got all these coloured leaves 
across the road as well. So I've got to get those in. Just side of my brush here, fit in some of these holes. Looking a bit too much sky showing there. Right. Bit of can of red, totally different red. Um could put some greens in as well. Let's get a bit of hooker's green. Don't want to use that on its own. It's just too vivid, but if you mix it with something. Some of your other colours, earth colours, or lighten it and darken it. You can put some blues, or if it's too blue, you can you green too blue, put a bit of brown in, that sort of neutralises it somewhat. I think we need more solid green there. Right. And we've got put a little bit of colour in this one actually out here. It's dropping out over this house. Right. We can go back with these when it's a bit drier. Um, now we need, let's put something um, in this road, why don't we? Let's go for the, well that's a bit darker along here, a bit of green. On my brush, might as well use that. And um, different greens here and this bit of border here, side of the road here. Um, Right, back to the road. Let's get some get some colours in there. It's a little bit wet. It's bleeding, that's not so bad though. Um, let the water do the work, which is often the best way with watercolour. It's got a will of its own. It will just take off in unexpected directions. But it's a good idea not to let that phase you. You can just see what you can make of it. You'd be surprised. some green out there in a minute. Um, good idea to step back as well and see whether you've got your total values and this here is, is too light. I can see that. So I need to darken up my bit of road here. I just put some Payne's grey there along with my blues and purples. Right. Let's leave that for a moment. Um, then let's get some of these, this roof in. That's um, sort of bluey purpley colour, catching the light, so we've got to try and keep some of that. Um, I'm just going to wipe that in, yes, sort of slaty colour. So we're just right. 
Okay, that's coming okay. You can put fine details in with a finer brush. And a different after we've got this wash in really, this is first pass. There's a lot of detail in this painting. So I wonder how much you should keep. Should you simplify? Which is often necessary, really. You've got to keep those contrasts, though, so that things read easier. And this building on here. Um, uh, slightly different colour of uh, the roof. I think I might just let's vary that a little bit. Uh, may not be entirely accurate, but it gives me a contrast with this one on the right there. So I'm not producing a photograph here. This is a painting, so you have to do what you have to do to get yourself a decent painting. So if that means bending the truth a little bit, that's what you have to do. But I'm trying to keep the essence of this building, this lovely scene in Yorkshire. Um, now we need to get the, let's get the front of this building in so we can see something of the, the value. So I'm going to take a little bit of ochre here, a gentle wash. Um, of ochre -ish. yes, that will do it. Just going to paint round the windows. I've got lots of beautiful stonework in these Yorkshire buildings. This part of Yorkshire. Right, there we go. So they've got some shrubs and things in the front garden which we'll we'll get in in a moment. Go again, essentially ochre, but we'll put a slightly different colour with some of our. Yes, we can do that slightly orangier, a little bit. Change the stone a bit. There we are. And this face as well. Just joined up, you can see the different roof line there. When I put in some more definition on the roof, you'll see it a bit better. this wall here which I'm going to make sure I've got dark enough a bit of Payne's grey I think I've got a bit of umber in there as well so 
Well, that comes down this wall here. There's another wall there, so we've got to get a different tone in there, I think. So it can... It's the same sort of stone, but alter the the shade a little bit so we can make it stand out a little bit. Um, let's give a bit of a bit of green into our mixture and I'll think it's slightly different tone in that wall area. So I think we can do that. Comes down here. Like that. And there's a path along there, which um, I've got to get in. I think we'll give a little bit of purple there to suggest it. Um, yes, a little bit of change of colour there, a little bit darker, so we can see, right, and this is all as well, that's much lighter, it's catching a lot more light, so I'm going to use some ochre there, yellow ochre, into my mix, a little bit better there. And there's a nice pot that I'll be putting in here. Nice ter terracotta with a garden plant there. That wall comes, yes, it's coming all down here. Got a bit of a railing here as well. We'll, we'll get that in. Right. Okay, let's go with that. And we've got a, a different wall there. Um, we'll put that a bit darker. This section comes onto the road here. Right, do that. And uh, got dark colours under the house there. Put some shrubs in in a minute. There's a nice dark tree there which I'll put in. Let's get that. And these are some little pillars there. Another one here. I can put different colours on the different tones so we can give some 3D too. We put a bit of shadow onto them as we go. I'm painting this in a sort of fairly loose way. Um, more impressionistic style, not absolutely photo accurate, but just to capture the the essence of it. Um, and we've got down here another building here. Our pedestrians are walking by, and we'll put. Some darks there to show the the roof of these other buildings. Roof line there. And again we've got different structures here. Um, yes, there's a roof line there, you can see just being obscured by these trees. But we can deal with that as we go. 
chimney there. Right. Um, let's give some more ochre to that, I think. Gonna darken up that roof as well though, it's not showing so well, so let's take a bit of that Payne's grey, a sort of bluey effect, the tiling there. Gonna step up line there. The roof. There's a shadow all along the side of the road being cast by by these overhanging trees. And this um, bit of tiling I've noticed. Let me get that's fairly bluish. A little bit of a shack here or a shed. Let's do that. I can put more detail in with these tiles as I require and also put some suggestion of the of the stonework as well. You can do that with different splashes of colour shapes. You can do that with different brushes, which I'll do shortly. Got it on here. It's another hedge, another stone. So we have to get some of that is quite dark. So we'll get some sienna and some umber. And some of these stones are really like this. Like the coping stones they are on top of this wall. Let's put some more dark in there. Um, brush I think. Yes this is a nice little brush you can use. Sort of number uh, number six. This one is sort of long small flat shape. But you can do nice suggestions of bricks and dry work as well, but it's just because it's a sort of square shape. You see that? Get some of the stones in. Right, and um, this, I think we can fill these colours in here. Need to come up 
this when I put in the the um, lamp post I'll be able to delineate that a little better um, yes I think cut that in a bit Most paintings go through a sort of somewhat ugly phase and you think to yourself, oh, I'm not getting anywhere with this. It's, it's a failure, but it's a big mistake to uh, abandon it at this stage um, because you'd be surprised how you can suddenly turn it around. Strange that may be, but I think it just takes a few marks sometimes to make it start to read a bit better. Um, now I need to lock in that bit, I think. On the house, just just different tones. And when I've put a a strong line under these eaves, a nice dark, it starts to read as well. You notice that, especially if you put some shadows where it's appropriate. So. Put a terracotta pot on there. Give some different tonal value. Suggest the tiles coming up there. Um, let's put a nice green. Let's get this this slab of green in here. It's a nice big shrub there. That's coming out there, I think, as well. So we'll vary it on greens and on top of this wall actually has a kind of overhanging red vine like ivy. So I'm going to go with that. Use this colours as well. It's, um, and here we've got, um, yes, there was some lovely little conifers on the side of that door. Remember that? Got more shrubs here, which we can do. A few shrubs on the side of that road there. Um, Show more of these these big stones make up this wall. Um, Yes, I think that green came out more there. So 
side of that house. Right. Um, I noticed too, there was a nice green um, projecting uh, here. I think I need to put in some really good purpley red colours in this section as well. I get that down. Green on this. These worn this pathway as well. Yeah, all green around there. Um, let's get, oh yes, I know where I've missed, there was a big conifer sort of tree here. So let's get something in there. I think we could put a bit of purple with that as well. You often get, oh that's a bit strong, very strong paints this. Sennelier. You have to dilute that a little bit. I'll put a bit of ochres there. Try and suggest the shape somewhat. Conical. Came down here over this. Very dark. All greens there. Some of the thin branches. And we've got a tree here actually. It's projecting out. So we'll suggest with our small brush here. So I'll put that in in a moment. Um, Um, put some colours in here. That post there. We had a lot of leaves now. Let's try and get some of those back in with our oranges. This is really intense colours they were. All the leaves falling here. All over the road. So I'm going to mixture of my cadmium red, crimson alizarin, some of my yellows, make some darker ones. Right, I'll 
Okay. Now this here, this is um, a wall as well. I've got to get that in. Let's go back to the squirrel bush and get rid of that bit of gaping white there. Yeah, this was just a, a wall coming along the edge here. So we'll try and, and they had some bunting on it as well. So I'm going to get some of that in in a moment. Um, there's a terracotta pot there I've got to get. Um, I've got this gaping bit of white here. Now let's get the um, rest of this building in on the left. Let's get something going there. Sort of. It's just uh, coming in here. a strong line on that house there oh, and I notice of course this way I've drawn that I've got a some green projecting out over there yes and that was a very nice shaped shrub that was I can remember that Um, I think we still need some oranges flicked in here. Right, how are we going? Um, Darker for this wall here. There was a shadow there. Let's get my reference back again. Oh no, I know a little bit of the um, the leaves, the fallen leaves were projecting out on this bit of this wall here. Let's try and do that. And uh, we need to put in our windows as well do that actually where we're at it let's got this smallish brush 
just going to hint at them. A little bit of Payne's Grey there. Tickle it in. Again, we have here just a suggestion. Window there, somewhat obscured by the door, by the um, this tree, I should say, and also I want to get some darker structures in that tree so nice shapes some sort of structure like that and also this one they were Coming here, this tray here. You've got some posts down there, side the road as well. I suggest some things here. Let's get um, something to suggest the tree on our left. So I think I'm going to get a fan brush like this. And um, what colour should we go with? Some sort of mid-tone. Just... Yes, I think we can do that. Suggest so something of our tree there, overhanging, and when I've got this fine thing I can suggest a few hints here. I want to leave some sky holes there, I don't want to totally obscure too dark. Um, you know, I think it came out like this. Just leave a suggestion of those branches there. I've got to suggest the, um, the meadow in the background too. I've got to do that. Um, while I'm just looking I've got to get my a little bit darker tones in the tree above the house I think we don't it doesn't read so well so let's put something like that it's quite a dark area actually so it's fairly mature. I think there's another one here poking out. So I need to uh, darken up that roof there, I think. So we can read it much more as a, a roof. They had dark bits as well there, and dark like a door. Got to put something like that, help us read, and also the line of the of the building. And let's something there. And I've got to get put our people in in a minute. If we can do that. Um, I think 
think I need to darken up and make a bit of a shadowy colour under under here. I don't think we're reading that line very well, so that's a bit of crimson alizarin coming on there. And that line there too. Should mark that darker. And here this part of this building is Eve is showing there. I just darken that in a smidge. We can get trees as well. I said we had a nice pencil. Yeah, let's get a nice lemony yellow. So I've got my yellow there and just a hint of sap green. And that should give me right, that should do it. And also there it's a lovely bit of uh, Colour there, and also hmm, let's see. I think I've got to get this this post in. make some more of these bricks. Oh, there was going to be a nice um, terracotta tub there. So let's mix that up with a little orange, a little umber. Put a little tub there. We can put some flowers in in a minute. Right, we could do that. Um, and uh, we've got enough going on in our. I think we can bring some of this into our foreground. Some of these reds and yellows, all these fallen leaves, some oranges. Crimson alizarin, and also our cadmium as well. There we are. Our yellows, and reds. I think I've got a, got a bit more yellow in there. I think. And let's go with that. Need to have our darks though in our tree. Help it read. So that's a bit of hookers, a bit of sap green there. 
give me a few darks, help it read, but principally in this lower section is where I need my darks because the sun's not getting here. Um, let's get on with that. Um, post that, that uh, lamp post. Let's have a look. Well, there we have the uh, finished painting. I've uh, put in the lamp post, done a lot more work on the wall, and uh, generally tightened up a little bit, put some texture into the buildings, the roof line, and a little pot here, a few plants here. Um, and I'm putting the characters as well, or pedestrians there. It's always a good idea to put them in because it gives you some sense of scale. Um, so all in all, I'm fairly pleased with it. Uh, I managed to preserve the, uh, the lights there and our um, characters are set against the light background so they stand out a little bit. Um, some texture. Um, so let me take off the tape and um, see what it looks like. And we've got a bit of a frame on it. Um, let's have a look. Where is it? Yes. Top one. And then I've got uh, these here. I can get it off. Yes, here we go. I'll make sure I don't pull away from my painting. So I don't take the image away. And then the last one over there. There we have it. So this is a scene in uh, North Yorkshire showing autumnal colours. Um, if you like this painting or you'd like to see more, please give me a like and uh, subscribe. That way you'll be notified when I've uh, put another painting up so you won't miss it. But anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed it and uh, a little autumn colour to look forward to. So thanks for watching.